Alrighty, what is Craig Langan, everybody? My name is Blitzwinger, and of course, welcome on back to another episode of Hunt for the Twelve. For, of course, Hearthstone, whereby we attempt to get to 12 victories, which uh, has been uh, quite a bit of a challenge lately. So, uh, of course, I think I've gotten one attempt with the Paladin, where we got seven victories, which was really awesome. Then uh, we had the attempt with the Rogue, which went really poorly. But I have to say, since then, I have played the Rogue a few more times just to get a little bit more familiar uh, with that class. And if I get a chance to play with that class again, I believe that I will do a better job. So that being said, today, however, we will be attempting... Uh, to reach 12 victories with, of course, the Shaman, uh, where you can see here is our deck here. A very interesting deck assembled here because I've usually, when I do have a mana spread, it's usually a lot heavier towards the 4, particularly 4 mana, 5, 6, like towards kind of the higher end. Here we've got a big amount of cards with 1 cost and 3 cost, so it's going to be really intriguing to see uh, whether or not I am able to uh, do well with this deck. I have to say, of course, I think that it's going to be particularly important with this deck to try and win early. And uh, yes, you could make the argument, well, why don't you think that way for all the other decks? Some decks are a little bit better late game. Uh, for example, a lot of my mage decks, when I build those, those are meant to be late game kind of winners. Uh, whereas with this deck, because of the mana spread that we have going on, we can't really allow the, um, the enemy to get a lot of strong things, uh, because if they do, then we become a lot weaker and we have obviously a hard time dealing with them. So that's why we have to be kind of a quick starter and uh, deal damage very quickly. There's one of our strong cards right there, so that's nice. For a late game, we do have the Sunwalkers, which I've actually managed to get two of those. I also managed to get three Hexes, which um, I'm just kind of pointing out all the big highlights that I was able to get in the deck. Um, I think I got... Uh, I think I got Lava Burst, I'm pretty sure. I wonder. Um, what else did I get? Uh, I can't recall, quite honestly. Uh, da -da 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 -da, I'm thinking back... What else was really good that I... I think I got one of the Totemic uh, Healer things, or Totemic Increased Health uh, things. Uh, that might have been it. I, I can't quite recall anything else. Okay. What else is he gonna do? You gotta end your turn, dude. If you're done, of course. I, I don't know what he's doing. There we go. Finally. So, I've got a lot of options here, which is really great. I could also play my own River Crocolisk. Uh, I think I'm just going to play the Loot Hoarder instead. Or maybe I want to play... No, I'm going to play my Loot Hoarder. And end my turn. Then I think I'm going to play the Stoneforged Axe. Attack, attack. That thing is gone. And uh, that would be pretty sweet. He might go for the hero power. I think that would be a valid option. He's got five cards. We've got four. So, a little bit of an advantageous position he's in. He has used the coin already, so that's good to know. Now, he does have the advantage of um, being able to potentially start dictating the pace of minions right now if he plays a minion again. Then he'll have two minions over on us, which won't be too good. Which then makes me think maybe I will play the River, river Crocolisk. Might be forced to do so. Now, of course, the thing that I have to consider with the uh, Stormforge Axe is the Overload one. It looks like he's not too worried about that. As he opts to uh, attack us to the face. And attack us to the face probably with the River Crocolisk. Yep. Okay, so now I have to choose, do I attack attack, or do I go ahead and play my River Crocolisk instead, pop him for two. No, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get the um, overload out of the way now. So I'm just gonna pop him, pop him, end my turn. Yes, alright, that's a good draw. Solid draw indeed. Which I might actually play, we'll see. Because, of course, on the next turn, we only have three mana to play. He now has to deal with two. 
Which makes me think he might just play hero power. We'll see. I guess we'll find out now, won't we? Let's see what he does. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about the silence there for a moment. Just having a little bit of a drink. All right. So just as I said, he plays the totem call. And that's a good one for him, because otherwise we would have just KO'd it for free. So I think I'm gonna... Wow, this guy doesn't like to end his turn very often, it seems like. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. Take the one damage. End my turn and let him go on ahead. Alright, so next turn we should be back to normal with five health. So I think I'm gonna play the fan creeper out there. It's kind of interesting how we've got all these high um, high mana cost cards right now, even though majority of the deck is actually composed of uh, lower end costs, like 1, 2, and 3 mana. So it's kind of interesting that we've uh, only drawn one of those, so we'll see. That means that uh, we're going to get a lot of those weaker, or not weaker, but less costly cards uh, right now, which uh, we'll see how that will affect the flow of the game, of course. Okay, so he's gonna play the Scarlet Crusader, who I actually might just hex. Oh, actually, no, I don't need to do that, because I've got my fan creeper. Okay, he still doesn't want to end his turn. Dude, your turn. Should I just say greetings? Please? Are you gonna end your turn, or are you... Mm -hmm. What's he thinking? Does he have something? Okay, I think he just keeps forgetting to actually turn it off. So here, what I could do is I could do this, which I I know that that's not smart. Or <laughs> I know it's not smart, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I know it's not particularly smart because I just took three damage, uh, but I really didn't want him to have the um, divine shield there for his turn. So. Forcing him to get rid of it, I think it's going to pay off, especially because, you see, the Shaman doesn't have, um, like, a lot of weapons or, I mean, the Stormforged Axe, yes, but not a lot more than that. And um, unlike, let's say, the Hunter where, or the Mage where the Hero Power can do di uh, direct damage, in this scenario, that's not the case, which therefore makes me feel a lot more comfortable having lower health, let's put it that way. And again, you've always got to kind of play to your um, to your enemy's weaknesses, so to speak. Okay, so I definitely need to get rid of that thing. And uh, I think that I may choose to go Iron Beak Owl to silence this thing. Then attack that, pop him for three... And I'll probably play my Ogre Magi in the next turn, Frostwolf Warlord. Okay. Let's silence that. Pop him for three. My Ogre Magi. And end my turn. Alright. So I do have Hex, of course, for anything really powerful if he plays. Now he does have to deal with the overload from the, uh, what was that spell called? Fork the Lightning. Which I have actually put, I think, one of those, or maybe two of those, actually, in my uh, deck, so that's pretty sweet. Okay, so uh, I think we shall begin by playing... Actually, I guess we should do this first, and then playing that. Sweet! Oh, -ho! oh baby! That's what I'm talking about. We've got an 8-8 creature on the field right now. Now, of course, the... Um, I think the Shaman does have that. Oh, I can't remember. I think the Shaman does have that ability of where... Uh, you can do 2 or 3 damage to things on the field. That's a very dangerous uh, weapon. That I need to avoid right now. But there he goes with the Fan Creeper. Which I will hack, of course. And uh, get rid of with my Iron Beak Owl. Then I'm going to go for the 8 damage. And uh, probably the Sunwalker. Because this is not a really strong way to protect yourself. <laughs> I 
I mean, it is a way, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against our cool froggy, but it's not a particularly uh, tall wall of defense. I think you forgot, I think you forgot to play it again. There you go. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's hex this thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I can't play that. Okay, well, then I'll just play the iron for a grizzly. That protects us as well. That's not bad. And uh, I think I'm gonna actually give myself three attack because I really don't want him to keep that. That gives him extra damage that I do not want to be worried about. So instead, I'm just gonna pop, pop, get rid of that. And I'm not worried about this totem, of course, because it's been silenced. Okay, so let's see what he does here. This might be game here. We've uh, definitely got a strong mat, a strong play right now. A strong amount of characters, I should say. I, I like how I'm like a strong mat, a strong play, a strong something. <laughs> All I'm saying is we've got a pretty good thing going right now. We've got two defenses with our taunted characters. And, uh, of course, we've got the 8-8 eight, eight attacker, the 4-4 four, four, uh, Ogre Magi. We've got a Sunwalker in hand, plus a Hex in hand. So, uh, we really do have quite a bit of tools uh, to fight back. So, I think that's game. Alright, well played. And... There we are. Victory. Alright. So, that was a good battle for us, indeed. A quick uh, victory there in Didios. So let's move on to uh, battle number two, shall we? If it lets me prep. There we go. Rarity in... Uh, or sorry, rarity colors in order. As I always read that part. I don't know why I always have to read that. White is common. Blue is rare. Purple is epic. And orange is legendary. I always thought purple was more rare. So whenever I drew purple, I was like, Oh yeah, I got the best cards. And then I realized that there's one level above it. I was like, whoa, I've not drawn one legendary and then I, and then I think I did, I think I have one or two legendaries at this point. But I do have quite a bit of epics, so that's nice. Alright, so, looks like we're playing a druid. A.K.A. Malfurion. Okay, interesting start here. I think I'm gonna get rid of the Frost Wolf and my Fan Creeper right now. It's interesting how we've been forced to play first in both of the scenarios. And it's interesting how we got the Loot Order and Stormforged Axe again. Pretty early on. Okay, so I'm just gonna end my turn. Can't do much. Now it's dangerous to go uh, first against this guys because the uh, druid has a lot of annoying weapons. So I could play this, but then he'll just KO it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the loot order and then end my turn. In the meantime, I might play. The Dust Devil and the Stormforged Axe on the next turn, which would, of course, take away three of my mana, which kind of stinks, but hey, what can you do? Alright, so he keeps his Lipanome. He doesn't even attack with it. Oh, no, he does. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I drew. What, why did I draw? Good good reasoning there, Blitzwinger. Good reasoning indeed. Um, I could silence this, but I don't really want to waste that right now. I know that I'm going to be putting myself in a weird position on the next turn where I will have no mana to mess around with, so to speak, but I think I'm okay with it in the long run. I guess we'll uh, just have to see. Alright, so I do take 4 damage there, which does sting because I take 2 for KOing him and then 2 for his death rattle. So we'll see if uh, this comes back to bite me in the butt or not. If he can't... Oh, I forgot about Shapeshift. If he doesn't Shapeshift, that's gonna be weird. Because he's gonna take 6 damage. Yep, there we go. I'm like, he has to Shapeshift. I forgot about that. A bad, bad, bad decision on my part there. A very costly decision. Okay, Acidic Swamp. Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna KO that. With my axe. And, uh, yep, that certainly seems like what I should do there. Okay, so let me think now. Now, next turn, I'm gonna play that Abomination. Let him play as much stuff as he wants. But I'm gonna play the Abomination and, uh, then, uh, let the Abomination kind of clear the field for us. Okay. Or, of course, I could go ahead and, uh, equip the Rock Biter. And summon my own 
my own, sorry, uh, no mission venter. That would be a reasonable play, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually play my abomination on its own and just pop him for two. End my turn and let him go on ahead. Now, I could have kept that probably to work with my rock biter so I could have five damage if I ever needed it, but I don't know. Maybe I should have done that. I'm not sure. I'm worried about acidic swamp boots or something like that coming out and destroying that, which would stink. Because then I wouldn't have gotten a use out of it. Okay, let's see. Let's see what he does here. So, of course, I, I really do need him to destroy that thing. Because I don't want to be playing much cards. Okay, so he's going to go probably for the three damage, right? Yep, and then pop it with the Murloc. Take the two on the gnome. And then play his Harvest Golem. Okay, good play. So then I'm gonna probably play my Fire Elemental right now. Do I wanna do that? Because I kinda wanna maybe just silence. Silence that. Play my Gnomish Inventor. And. Ooh, that's a good card. Yeah, it is a very good card. Because that could mean, uh. Getting rid of that gnome for free. Alright, so I'm wondering if he's gonna attack with the golem and the gnome on our gnome. That's definitely a viable option, because he keeps the golem. And, uh, it's a pretty reasonable trade-off, but he might just go for the uh, attack. I guess we'll find out. Alright, what you gonna do, dude? What you gonna do? He's definitely in the advent advantageous position right now, so I guess we'll see. But I do have a lot of cheap uh, stuff to play, which is going to be really nice. Because we've got Hex, Frost Shock, uh, Rock Biter, okay. plus Forked Lightning. I mean, a lot of uh, nice stuff like that. Okay, so he's going to take one damage to get rid of the Owl. That's a good trade-off. And... He's gonna pop it and pop it, okay. So now I'm gonna play obviously forked light oh actually. I'm gonna play that first, then play this. Okay, then I'm gonna Oh wow, I should have froze that first, shouldn't I? Will I be able to Yeah, I guess I would be. Get rid of that. And uh, I'm actually going to summon a totem. I'm not going to KO that guy. End my turn. All right. So let's see what he does. That's good. Then he plays Starfire. Okay. Interesting. Wouldn't expect him to play that on something of that caliber. But hey, if it works, it works, right? So let's get rid of this thing now. And end our turn. Of course, we had to deal with Overload there, so got to keep that in mind. Now, next turn, I can actually play Feral Spirit and Hex on whatever he plays here. And a Rockbiter weapon. can play all three of those cards. I don't think I will, but he's got six cards. That makes me nervous. All right, here comes Demolisher. All righty, so... Hex, that's a pretty obvious play there. Now I just need to decide, what do I want to do? Do I want to play these two and keep Sunwalker for later? Yeah, I think what I'm gonna have to do here... I really do need to get rid of that thing. I, I don't want to have it there, so... I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this... This... That... Pop this... Pop that, end my turn, and let him go on ahead. Okay, he's got a lot of cards, which means a lot of options. We've got less health, less cards, and uh, the only advantage, of course, we've got is the, uh, on the field right now, is the minion control, which is nice. Alright, would be nice to draw... Nah, uh, I don't even know. Hex, probably? 
Would be nice to draw Hex. Actually, that would be nice. Okay, so he plays the Taunted Creature, which probably will force me to trade my 6-4 for that. I don't have much other options. I'm probably going to play a Totem, the Sunwalker, and we'll see what we draw. Forgot to destroy that, didn't I? And that. How could I? How could I forget? I always destroy the field. Come on, five cards. And the reason why I do this to check is because sometimes it will show five, but then you look at the actual number here and it will be something bigger. Uh-oh. So he's going to take down one of our feral... What are they called again? Spirit wolves. There we are. Okay, so let me play that. See what we draw here. Okay, that's pretty sweet. But I have to get rid of that. Pop him. And... You know what? I think I'm going to stack my Ogre Moggies. Uh, sorry, my spell damage. That way, if we draw something with spell damage, it'll be plus two, which would be pretty sweet. Okay, let's see what he does now. I gotta watch out for swipe. That would stink. Whoops, sorry about that. Just kicked the table there by mistake. Okay, he keeps drawing, which makes me very nervous. Because he can uh, swipe Ogre Magi and then deal that one damage to everything. Shapeshift and get rid of the um, this fellow right here. Okay, the 4 health and uh, taunt. That's a good play. Now it's going to be 5-8 with the Swordsmith. Good play. Good play indeed. I will admit that was a very, very strong play on his part. Um, I am kind of... Not in a particularly exciting position here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Is my shield. Then play that. And uh, I have to end my turn. Because I, I really don't want to be attacking right now. Because Ogre Magi and the Divine Shield I can give up. But much more than that would make no Your sense. Oh, that sucks. He had a Spellbreaker this whole time. That sucks quite a bit. Okay, let's see what he does now. Is he gonna shapeshift and take that thing out? Guess we'll have to find out. One shot. Okay, there we go. That's a good play. Get rid of that. Now, is he gonna do anything with the Azure Drake? That's what I'm... Uh, not Azure Drake. Oh, yeah, it is Azure Drake, isn't it? Yeah, it is Azure Drake. I uh, forget, Twilight Drake is the other one, the purple one. This one's kind of purpley as well in the background. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, he's got a lot of stuff going for him, positively. Oh, my goodness. Please, a really good draw. Something really good. Something really, really nice. Come on, baby. Please, please, please. Okay, so is he going to... I don't know. I, I I feel like he's going to attack. I just think he's deciding whether or not to take the grizzly or the uh, wolf. Okay, there we go. So, now it is our turn. Oh, baby! That is pretty sweet, I have to admit. Now I just need to figure out uh, what to do here. So, okay, first of all, let me just play my totem, because it doesn't really matter. Sweet. So, I can do right now seven points of damage, which means I can take this thing out for free. Right? Or I can get this thing down to one health. So, okay, this would be a fair trade, right? That for this, that sounds good to me. Then I can take this thing out as well, but then I would have to trade my Ogre Magis. And then he remains one character up, which is bad. If I play this over here, keeping him at one health, then trade this. Ah, uh, no, this is... I don't know, this is... Uh, this kind of stinks, to be honest. Um, I think I'm going to trade that. And I think I'm going to trade that. 
Then I'm gonna actually take down this thing. And this thing. And then let him go on ahead. Oh my goodness! <laughs> that was like a perfect draw for him. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> yep, this is basically death. There is... Oh, baby! I mean, that kind of sort of helps. Because it allows me to get rid of... Oh my goodness. It allows me to get rid of this. And pop him for four. It's his turn. Oh god, this is so nerve-wracking. So he's gonna play his Bloodfin Raptor. Now I could obviously trade right now. Oh, nope, I can't trade. So it's all up to this card right here. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually very good. But the problem here is... I would still have to... Uh, I would still not have enough uh, power to deal with this thing, which is... Whoops, sorry, you might be hearing my dog bark. My apologies about that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop him uh, to the face here. Heal. Right? Which is not horrible. And I hope that he trades his 9. Oh, wait a minute, he can do 12 damage right now. Sorry, he can do 13 damage right now. And if he got some sort of a boost, he can win. This is dangerous. I didn't think of the fact that he can pop me to the face. Okay. It doesn't look like he's gonna go for that. Okay, so he's gonna go Bloodfen Raptor on the Ogre Magi. Okay, so we're basically gonna be just uh, at a kind of a stall, really. So here we go, it's our turn. That's pretty sweet. Let me play that first, though. Okay, very nice. So, I'm gonna be able to pop him for two. And end my turn. Heal all my guys. Oh my goodness, this is terrifying. Because one strong card he draws and it's all over. Okay, here comes the Scarlet Crusader. He's gonna shapeshift and pop this probably, right? Okay, that's a very good draw for me. I like that. Let me play the totem first. Play that as well. Oh, wait, why didn't I put it there? Oh, that stinks. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and... Oh, actually, there we are. Now I've got that powered up. And pop that. Go for two, go for one. End my turn. Oh my goodness, this is a lucky, lucky game. This is a close game, I'll, I'll say that too. This is certainly a close game indeed. Okay, so that's victory. That's game. Well, well played, sir. Well played indeed. Well played. I oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's all over. And we drew a Sunwalker, so that's a good kind of a late game draw. But honestly, we got saved because of the Hex. But you could make the case that he got saved because he drew the Iron Bark. So it's one of those things. Luck is definitely a factor. And definitely something to keep in mind. Alrighty, so with two victories, we shall go on to a third game and see how this unfolds. This will be the last game for this particular episode of Hunt for the Twelve as we try to get to 12 victories with, of course, the Shaman deck that we have assembled in the arena mode for, of course, Hearthstone. So, let's see. Got ourselves a worthy opponent. Oh, I really would have uh, liked to fight against a Grand Master. I don't even know what the heck would that... How what would that be? What would it entail to fight against a grandmaster? Okay, so Fork Lightning, Dire Wolf, and Earthshock. That's not a bad start, honestly. It's it really is pretty decent. So I'm okay with that. We are playing against the most powerful cre um champion in the game. Uh yeah, I'm just gonna end my turn. Which uh, obviously becomes problematic. Because we're playing against the Paladin. So I'm just going to play that. End of my turn. Sweet. Not bad. Next turn, Dire Wolf plus uh, Earthshock. That sounds good to me. Of course, that's if he goes for... Okay, he goes for that. Interesting. 
So, I can get rid of this, actually. If I play that, that's one damage. Um, no, actually, I wouldn't be able to get rid of it on this very turn. I'm not gonna waste a hex on it. I don't think I want to play my Dire Wolf Alpha right now. I think that would be kind of silly. So instead, I'm probably just gonna play another Totem. That's a lot more interesting now. Oh man, I really would love to play Earthshock on this. I wish I would have played the Dire... but then I wouldn't have gotten this. Okay, so um... Ay 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 ay, do I do this? No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna waste it, because what if he plays something with actual... Uh, where it's worthwhile silencing something, you know? Because that's Earthshock's big thing, is not so much as the one damage, as much as it is the fact that you can silence something. I think that's its biggest kind of uh, appealing factor, so to speak. Okay, he's very smart to get rid of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hex this. And then... Play. Do I want to do that? Considering on turn 5, I've got two different things that I could attack him with. Um. Hmm. I really don't think I want to do that, honestly. Earthshock is going to be wasteful. Forked Lightning would put me in a weird situation, so I'm just going to end my turn, let him go ahead. And see what he does. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. He's gonna get rid of my other totem, of course. Then he plays the Acidic Swamp Ooze. And Reinforce, okay. Strong play there, strong play indeed. Okay, so I think... Now I'm kind of thinking maybe I should play this. Right? Then I could uh, Earth Shock if it hits this thing to get rid of it. And I could play a Totem plus my Dire Wolf. Oh no, sorry, just my Dire Wolf. Just because it makes no sense to send out the Fan Creeper out there to just get slaughtered by these three minions, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit him with this. Okay, that's not bad. Then I'm gonna hit him with that. Then I'm gonna... Go ahead and go for the... So, no... Yeah, Totem Call. Setting up for the next turn, really. Okay, sweet. Would have been nice to have that uh, out on that last turn when we hit these two things. Because, guess what? Three damage? Yay! That would have been sweet. As would have been the extra damage on that. Okay, so he gets rid of both of our things there. I don't know why he didn't attack. Oh, okay, I get it. Never mind. Okay, so the 4-6 here. That's dangerous. So why don't we go ahead and get rid of it? Or do we want to do that? I could play Argent Squire, Dire Wolf, and Totem. No, I can't do the Totem as well. Oh! That's just a little bit not enough there. So I think I'm gonna hex this thing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Oh man, I don't even know if I want to do that. So my options are Totem, that, this, Totem, or Dire Wolf, Totem, Hex, this. Yeah, I think it's Hex and this. It's not a great play, especially if he's got some strong creatures, but I don't know. I, when I think of Paladins, I don't think of like really powerful uh, creatures. It's more just a really incredible... Well, there I go. I'm wrong. <laughs> you see? Very, very wrong there. That was a poor decision on my part, evidently. So, I can get rid of this, which is nice. So, let me just think. I think I'm gonna play this... plus this. And then end my turn. Let's see what he does here. Um, I would be willing to take 8 points of damage, honestly. To get rid of that. If I had to, like, Rockbiter. If he goes for 
getting rid of the uh, four six with the eight eight. Yep, which he does. Okay. So, oh wow, I can't even use the rock biter, can I? Well, I can't rock biter and fire elemental. That would be kind of my only solution here. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna play that. Please hit the. Oh, why didn't it hit the giant? That would have been perfect. That would have been truly perfect. Oh wow, I forgot! Oh, buffoon mode engaged! Oh wow, why do I never think, guys? Why do I never think? Wow, wow, woo we? I was gonna take the 8 damage. I was like, I'm gonna take it, I don't care. Oh god, that's it. I just blew it. That was my mistake right there. I just blew the whole match there. That sucks. Horrible mistake on my part. He's got five cards. Yeah, this is looking horrible for me. Should have played that first. Genius. Could have got a 5-5 out of that. You gotta at least think, Blitzwinger. At least a little bit. It's like once you get two victories, you're just like, Oh yeah, I got this. Oh yeah, that's gonna suck. Consecration, snap jaw, eight points of damage. I really think this is over, guys. Oh wow, okay, now he's just showing off. Now he's just being a pain in the butt. Okay, I think that's game. I, I really don't see myself drawing anything that... Well... I mean, that's kind of good. Especially because of this and this. It's not enough, though, because he's probably got true silver or something like that. So, yeah, snap is 2 damage. If he's got anything that does damage, it's over. Yep. Well played, sir. Well played. Okay, come on, attack. Is he gonna attack? Yep. Okay, sweet! So, uh, there's our loss. Uh, Mr. Blitzwinger made uh, quite a few silly errors, really, in uh, this game, and I definitely can look back and see uh, some of the decisions I made and where I went wrong. So that being said, of course, on the next episode of Hunt for the Twelve, we'll see if we can get back onto our winning ways. We've got two victories, one loss, so hopefully we'll be able to generate maybe two or three. It would be nice to obviously get to all the twelve, but I'm thinking probably three to five more victories we should be able to get out of this deck. So uh, hopefully we will manage to do so on the next of course, episode of Hunt for the Twelve. That being said, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please smash that like button, share the videos with your family and friends, favorite the videos as well. I will catch you guys next time. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you later, alligators. Peace out, guys.